Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for truth and falsity. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. In this video, by the end of it, you should be able to translate an English sentence into a precise mathematical statement. You should be able to translate a mathematical statement using all of the connectives into English. You should be able to give the truth values for the connectives and or if then not. And you should be able to explain why false implies true is true. This is one of the trickier parts of implications. Our motivation is that we want to be able to communicate mathematics precisely without misunderstandings. And so what we're going to do with this stuff is we're going to take a lot of common uh, connectives uh, and words that we use in English and give them formal mathematical meanings that we can all agree on. In particular, we're going to be looking at not, and, or, if then, and if and only if. So these have English meanings, and we're going to give them precise mathematical meanings that are very similar to the uh, English ones, they're inspired by them, and we'll use, uh, we'll, we'll add some additional uh, precision that could be confusing if we just ported them into English, ported them into math. To start off, um, we'll look at uh, what the not operator does. So this, this not symbol. And throughout, when we ever use P or Q or R, these will denote mathematical statements. So for example, P might be for all real numbers X, X is less than X plus one. And whenever we use T, we're gonna mean true. And, we, and, and whenever we say F, we're going to mean false. So our first definition is what this not thing does. So not P means the negation of P. Imprecisely, this is the opposite of the original statement. We'll look at um, formally what negations are uh, in a later video, but for now, think of them as the opposite truth value. So the, the thing that does the opposite. Here's an example. Let P be the statement, I eat fish. So the negation is, I don't eat fish. And one of the ways that we keep track of all of this information is we look at what's called a truth table. So this is a truth table right here. On the left-hand side, we have all the possible values that P could take. P is either true or false. And then we'll write out the corresponding values that not P would take. So for example, if P is a true statement, then not P would be a false statement. If P is a false statement, then not P would be a true statement. This is a way of representing all of the information about a particular uh, mathematical statement. So not P um, can only take on these two values, and these are what it takes on based on what P does. This also tells us how negation works. It does the opposite. Uh, we haven't yet talked about how you negate uh, mathematical statements, but we'll leave that imprecise for now. We'll come back to it uh, later. It takes quite a bit of work. Now we talk about ands or conjunctions. So this wedge symbol, this upside down V, means and. So P wedge Q means both P and Q are true. So it's an and statement. So let's take the example, I will eat healthy food and Q is I will exercise. Now, if both of these are true, so if you have a friend that both eats healthy and exercises, would P and Q be true about them? Yes, of course, right? If they do both of the things they said they were going to do, then their AND statement would be true. Now let's consider various other combinations of P and Q. What would happen if P was, was true, so they ate healthy food, but Q wasn't true? They weren't exercising. So would their, their AND statement be true? No, because only one of the two things is true. Similarly, if they ate healthy, if they didn't eat healthy food, but they did exercise, their AND statement would be false. 
And if they do neither of the two, they just eat junk food and sit on the couch all day, then their and statement is definitely false. Everything about it is false. This table gives us all of the information about and that we need. It tells us the four different ways of combining P and Q. It's only true when both P and Q are true. Now we move on to ORs, or disjunctions. So this V symbol is OR. So P, V, Q, P or Q means P is true or Q is true or possibly both. So in math, when we say OR, we mean that it can include both things. This is called being an inclusive OR. Sometimes in English, when we use OR, uh, we don't really mean it to be inclusive. When you say, tonight I'm either going to go for a run or I'm going to go um, eat chips, you don't usually mean that you could possibly do both. But in math, we'll always mean inclusive OR. Let's look at this example of how to construct uh, what truth values the OR should take. So consider these two statements. P is I will do push-ups for exercise, and Q is I will run for exercise. Now imagine the various uh, ways that P could be true and Q could be false, and think about whether your OR statement was still true. Another way to think of this is, imagine that you said for your New Year's resolution that Every day, you're either going to do push-ups or you're going to go for a run. What are the situations in which you would consider your resolution to be broken? Take a moment to fill this out. So if you did both activities, you're, you definitely um, are still good. If you did one of the two activities, you're also good. And if you did neither of the activities, then that's the only case in which your OR statement was false. Here, this top line, when you did both of them, you did push-ups and you did for a run, you went for a run, you were very productive that day, and your OR statement is still true. That's what it means to be an inclusive OR. Next, we have implications. So this arrow means implies. So P implies Q means if P is true, then Q has to also be true. Let's look at an example of this, where P is you will get an A in the Intro to Proofs course, and Q is you will pass the Intro to Proofs course. These two things are related. Now, to understand what the truth values are of this, it helps to think about the following scenario. Imagine that at the beginning of the course, the instructors promise you, if you get an A in the course, then you will pass the course. Right? This is a very common thing. Um, a is quite a strong grade. So they're saying P implies Q. They're promising that. Now, what circumstances would have to happen for you to call the instructor a liar? What are the possible outcomes where you would be upset and you'd say, you told me this, and then you broke your promise? Can you think of the only example that that would happen? Okay, we're going to come back to that, that example. Let's work through the truth values of this. So here's the case where you got an A in the course, but you didn't pass. Then you would be quite upset. You'd say that my original statement what the instructor said was a lie, because you did get an A, but you didn't pass the course. So this tells us why um, true implies false um, means that the implication is false. Another way of thinking of it is implications tell you that if you are true, then that'll all also tell you that Q is true. So that's why the first one, uh, the first one is, is the most intuitive. Um, it tells you that if from P you can get to Q, well, if P is true, then you can get to Q. You will also be true. The last two are um, the trickiest to think about. Now, let's go back to our scenario. 
So imagine the case where I've, I've said, if you get an A, then you'll pass. What does uh, this last scenario look like? Well, it's false that you got an A, and you also didn't pass. So you failed the course, you didn't get an A, and you failed the course. Um, so you got like 40% in the course. Would you come up to me and say that I lied? No, I don't think you would. The next one is a little bit trickier. So this is the case where you didn't get an A, but you did pass the course. So for example, you might have gotten a B in the course. Now, would you come up to me and say, look, I got a B in the course, I passed it, I think you're a liar for what you told me at the beginning of the course? No, you wouldn't. Because what I said only applies to people who got A's. If you didn't get an A, so if P is false, it doesn't really say anything about the implication. So in the case where the, the P part is false, then the implication is automatically true. This is a little bit counterintuitive and takes some time to think about. Work through some examples and you'll see that this has to be the case. The last one we're going to look at, look at is if and only if. So this is this double-headed arrows. P if and only if Q means that P is true if and only if Q is true. This is also sometimes denoted as P I F F Q. Let's look at an example. If P is the statement, you will get a final grade of at least 50% in the Intro to Proofs course, and Q is you will pass the Intro to Proofs course. You can think about the various uh, truth values for P and Q and what it means for these two things to be equivalent. So if they're both true, then the equivalence is true. If one of them is true and the other one is false, well then it's not if and only if. So they have to both be the same. If they're both true, it's fine. And if they're both false, this is also true. So if and only if is saying that they have the same truth values. Here are some exercises for you to work on in this section. Translate each of the following sentences into pure math symbols. First one is x is even and x is a multiple of 5. The second one is if x is a multiple of 6, then it is also a multiple of 3. Third one, every multiple of 6 is also a multiple of 3. You'll notice that 2 and 3 are quite similar. Um, one of them uses if then and one of them uses every, um, but they should morally be the same sentence. They might be expressed in different ways. Fourth one, a real number is positive exactly when it is equal to the square of a non-zero real number. And finally, a hard exercise, what it means for P to be a prime natural number. Now you should take some time to reflect. Why have we formally defined the connectives? What was the purpose of it? Why does the truth table for and, or, if, then, and if and only if have four rows, but the table for not has only two rows? Why did we assume the mathematical statements can only be true or false and nothing in between? Does that leave out certain statements or certain things you want to express? How can the truth table for and be made to look like multiplication? Thank you very much.